Hey everybody, let's talk about diversification. So diversification is a basic concept, a universal principle that uh, frankly sometimes I don't pay attention to enough. Now, how does this apply to coding and technology? Well, if you're learning to be a developer, whatever type of developer you want to be, a web app developer, a mobile app developer, etc., the key to being successful is to have a range of skills that might be marketable. Now, that doesn't mean, you know, to, to be a jack of all trades and master of none. You still need to become a, an expert in one particular area or another, but you should be open to learning new technology. So, for instance, if you happen to be a web developer, or an aspiring web designer, and you're working on your HTML, your CSS, and then a little JavaScript and maybe PHP because you want to do freelance. If you want to do freelance, PHP is still the king language, that's for sure, especially when it comes to web apps. But after you do this, after you're comfortable building web apps with PHP, as an example, uh, I would suggest that you learn, you start poking around and learning another language. Or maybe your PHP guy is using a Laravel framework. It might make sense to look at another PHP framework to compare, or better yet, look at another language, let's say I would suggest, for instance, Python, and look at how Python does things, and maybe once you get used to just basic Python, maybe work on a the Python, one of the Python web frameworks, like Django is a big one, another one is Flask, for instance. The whole point is, is by expanding your skill sets, once you've mastered your basics, again, you should always master the basics. You should expand your skill sets uh, horizontally, as they say, uh, meaning try to learn different things. You might learn JavaScript on the server, which is Node.js as an example. Uh, again, this is what you do after you've, you've, you've really become quite comfortable with a particular technology that you choose to study. So in my example, I was saying learn the web, doing web development for freelance, PHP is your best choice today. Not necessarily because PHP is the best language. As I said in many, many videos, each language, each environment, if you will, has its pros and its cons, you know? So don't get caught up in the language wars. It's silly. Uh, yeah, so diversification, though, is a very useful thing. So let me give you a quick story in terms of, uh, well, number one story in terms of coding by being flexible that way myself, when I was doing freelance work, it just opened up a huge range of possibilities in terms of the type of jobs I could do. I would be approached and say, we need to do this, or we need to do that. And it got to the point where I would choose the language based on the type of job that it was. I wasn't trying to always take my Java skills and make it apply in that particular job. I would look around, okay, what language what framework would work best given the client's needs. Now, before I did that, I was opening myself up to new jobs by learning new languages. But it gets to a point where you've done many languages, it, it's easy to just jump into one thing or any other. It's not a big deal. So by opening myself up to new technologies, new languages, I was able to get different types of jobs. So sometimes I was doing, you know, back in the day, DVD work where I would produce... Uh, the apps that would run in DVDs, and another day I'd be doing web app work, and another day I'd be doing uh, custom Windows type of development. So it was, I just jumped around depending on where the demand was. By having this flexibility, it just gave me a lot of job opportunities as a developer, because in the end, I wasn't a Java developer. I wasn't a PHP developer. I wasn't an HTA developer. I was a developer. And I just worked with whatever languages or frameworks that I needed to work with at the time. This same principle of diversification, you see that in so many other things in life. Where I really learned it was in business and later on in the market, the stock market. If I had to pick out the single biggest mistake I've ever made in the markets, and it cost me a lot of money, not in terms of money I lost, although I sort of did okay in the stock market, not great, but I was actively involved in in uh, buying and selling stocks on my own and so forth and trading. The biggest single mistake I made, I think, was not being nearly as diversified as I should have been. 
And the reason that was a mistake, because it, it sort of blinded me to opportunities, because I would get caught up in, oh, this is going to be the best stock, this is going to be the best company, you should invest, put a lot of money into that. And when it comes to investing, you never want to do that, because even if you're 100% right, you could be wrong. And actually in business, that was one of my expressions going back you know, 20 years, I used to say, if you're 100% right, your new product or service is going to do well, you probably got a 10% chance. So when it comes to the stock market, the biggest mistake I made was not diversifying my investment. So even if I was 100% sure that this stock was going to go up, this company was going to do well, I should have not put so much money into that. Because when you do, it becomes very nerve-wracking that you're, you you got too much invested in a particular position. The position is just buying a certain amount of stock. And, and what happens in that situation makes it very difficult for you to play out the thesis. So I, had, I would say, okay, I think this company is going to do well, Apple, whatever, pick a company, Apple, Sirius XM, Ford, whatever, because of this and this reason. But the problem is nothing goes up in a straight line, meaning the stock price will never go up to straight. It will go up a little, go down, go up, go down, go up, go down, et cetera, et cetera. And if you have too much invested in a particular stock and you see it starts going down, you get really nervous, you, go, ah, you freak out. So you can't play out a, your uh, thesis because it's, 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 you're, you're, you're seeing your, your financial situation on paper go up and down dr drastically sometimes. But if you have only a small little position in a particular stock, if it goes up, down a little bit, whatever, it doesn't be, you know, if 5% if of your money, your investable money rather, is in a stock, and the stock goes down 10%, you've only lost 0.5% of your money, right? But if you have 25% of your money in a particular stock and the stock goes down 5%, you've lost, you know, whatever it is, 2.5%, I don't know what the not math is, you do the math, but you see what I mean? It's a lot more pressure on you. So by having small positions spread out different stocks that you, you cautiously pick, you're much better off, you won't be so nervous if something goes up or down. And when it comes to programming, if you're so heavily invested in just one language or one framework and that starts, that framework and that language starts losing market share, it could freak you out because you're like, oh man, where am I going to get work? Where am I going to get work? Well, if you had a different position, you were more diversified in your skill sets and you said to yourself, you know what, I'm going to be an expert developer, not an expert Java developer, not an expert JavaScript developer. You know what I mean? Not an expert Python developer. You're going to be an expert developer. But to become an expert developer, you, you have to pick a particular language. You have to master that. And then you can start spreading out across horizontally. You're in, you're in PHP, for instance. You learn some JavaScript, maybe some Node, or maybe you go some Python, where you can do Python Django and Flask, or maybe you can do Python uh, machine, machine coding. It's, it's getting hotter and hotter, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there you go, diversification in code and investments and in life. It's a good universal principle. Ciao, ciao.